Uh, so welcome everybody. Thank, thank you all for coming uh, to this session about BuildKit. Uh, my name is Tony Stigi. I'm a software engineer from Docker, joined here by Akihiro Suda from NTT, and we're both uh, maintainers of BuildKit. Uh, so what, what is BuildKit? Uh, before we get into this, maybe we should take a step back and just look at like, how container images are built today. Uh, and the way it most likely looks like is that you have a Docker file. Um, Docker file basically has just like a sequence of steps that that uh, executing containers to for your build to run, and then you just run Docker build to build this Docker file. And what it will do is it will use the build component in Docker engine to actually invoke this. And this is basically like all, almost all containers that are built today. Uh, and the build component was there in the very early days of Docker. Uh, so why did we need to change this? Uh, what's the issue with, with the old builder and why do we need BuildKit? Uh, well, the main reason is that uh, build, Builder was started in very early days when, with Docker and now we really have like quite different, uh, we've like developed quite, quite a lot and we have different use cases now. We need, much, we need to build much more complex build, builds and we also need much better user experience and developer experience. Uh, one of the issues also is that the old builder is very tightly uh, modeled after Dockerfile, so that means that we basically can't change anything because Dockerfile has these backwards compatibility rules. Uh, I think we could do better you know, on performance. Uh, uh, there's also these issues that uh, uh, it's not completely isolated from the other uh, Docker engine. For example, you could uh, you could do something like a Docker stop on a container that's uh, that's running as part of your build and that will stop your build in the old builder, and that's like definitely something that shouldn't happen. And because it's bundled into Docker engine, then you can't really use this code for anything else as well. Uh, it's just like for the Docker use case. And BuildKit is basically made to just solve all of those issues. So it comes with dozens of new features and bug fixes. It's uh, way faster. We have better caching. Uh, uh, we can parallelize stuff. Uh, it can, so it's not specific to Docker files only anymore. You can basically build all, like, almost any language and dynamically load the, the language definition with, with a Docker image. Uh, it's properly componentized, so for example, the old Docker file part is completely separate from BuildKit core. So if you do not build Docker files, you don't need that one at all. And it's not really like a like a new opinionated builder. It's more like a like a toolkit for building separate uh, building other builders. And uh, so it's very flexible and just solves the hard problems for you. Um, so. Uh, BuildKit is, uh, is a completely new project. It's a completely fresh code base, but uh, of course we don't want to reinvent the wheel like when we don't have to. So it's based uh, on, the, on the container D work. So it uses, uh, reuses lots of code from container D. Whenever we do an image pool, we use the container D code and, and we use uh, container D snapshots for storage and stuff like that. You can even use BuildKit with, directly with the container D daemon and let the container daemon manage the storage for you. Uh, we also want to play nice with uh, all the open container standards. So for example, like every time you execute the process as part of your build, it's uh, running uh, through the OCI runtime spec. So if you have a different implementation for, for implementing that specification, it's very easy to plug this in. And uh, your build results also can be, uh, can be exported with the OCI ME spec or like OCI image uh, Darva, so all the, it supports all the new standards. Uh, so this was a quick introduction to BuildKit. Akira will now talk about a couple of the uh, new features in BuildKit. Uh, BuildKit has a bunch of new features and we don't have time to uh, cover all the features, but uh, I will uh, have a look at uh, some, of, some of these new features uh, such as uh, optimization of uh, Docker build. Uh, so uh, with uh, legacy uh, Docker build, uh, it doesn't compute uh, dependencies across uh, Docker file instructions uh, correctly. Uh, so if you modify a line in a Docker file, uh, the next 
uh, the cash for the next line was uh, always invalidated. Uh, so in this example, uh, we have uh, three lines. Uh, the first line is the base image. If the second line uh, specifies uh, which TCP ports to be exposed, and the third line has uh, some aftergate for installing uh, packages. And if uh, we modify the uh, second line and change the uh, port number, uh, the cache for the next line after git uh, was always invalidated. Even though uh, the instruction doesn't depend on the uh, TCP number to be exposed. Uh, so it was, uh, be, it was not uh, very effective. And the legacy Docker build also has uh, issues in scheduling. Uh, so in this Docker file, uh, we have three stages. And uh, stage zero, uh, uh, so uh, stage two uh, depends on stage zero and stage one. Uh, so in theory, uh, we should be able to execute stage zero and stage one concurrently. Uh, but in, in the actual legacy Docker build implementation, everything was uh, sequential. Uh, so we have uh, no, con no concurrency in the legacy Docker build. Uh, and uh, build kit uh, can uh, analyze uh, dependencies accurately uh, by using LLB, uh, which is a new uh, low level format for building images. Uh, it's very similar to LLBM, but LLB for uh, building images. And LLB has a graph structure, so we can analyze uh, dependency accurately, and we can do efficient casting, and we can also do uh, concurrent execution for uh, multi-stage Docker files. So LLB is uh, not for humans, uh, it's for machines. It's included in protocol buffers, and LLB is uh, typically compiled from uh, human readable languages, uh, such as uh, Docker file, uh, but you don't necessarily need to use uh, Docker file. Uh, we have uh, also we have also front ends, uh, which uh, is a program that uh, compiles uh, high level languages into LLB. Uh, so, for example, uh, we have our build packs uh, that is uh, ported from uh, Heroku and Cloud Foundry. Uh, we also have a Mocha file and Gokka file. Uh, these are very similar to Docker file, but uh, optimized for very specific use cases. We have also uh, Docker Assemble uh, available in Docker Enterprise Edition. Uh, this is uh, how LLB works. Uh, so uh, we have a source op for uh, from instructions, and we have exec op for run instructions. Uh, so the LLB uh, ops is uh, very similar to uh, Docker file instructions, but uh, not always the same. Uh, for example, we don't have a LLB op for expose instruction, because expose is just a metadata, it's not a real instruction. And uh, we have uh, dependencies across uh, uh, file, file op and uh, stage zero ops and stage one ops. Uh, so in, the exam in this example, uh, we can execute uh, stage zero and stage one in parallel. So it's uh, very fast. Uh, for example, uh, if uh, we build uh, github.com slash mobi slash mobi uh, using uh, Docker build, uh, with legacy Docker build, uh, it takes, it took, uh, five minutes and 42 seconds. Uh, but uh, with BuildKit, it just takes uh, two minutes and 50 seconds. So it's two times faster. And uh, with BuildKit, uh, you can extend a Docker file uh, with a custom syntax. Uh, so in the first line of Docker file, uh, you can specify a uh, front-end image uh, that uh, translates a Docker file into LLB. Uh, so for example, you can specify uh, syntax equal uh, docker slash docker file 1.1 experimental. Uh, you can also specify your own front end and uh, you can also uh, extend syntax as you like. Uh, so for example, uh, with uh, docker file 1.1 experimental, uh, we can have uh, new instructions uh, called uh, run dash dash mount type cache. And with mount type cache, uh, you can uh, preserve uh, cache of uh, compilers such as uh, Go build and uh, caches or package managers such as Aftergate or YAM or uh, uh, NPM or whatever. Uh, so in, in this example, uh, you can uh, specify the cache volume for uh, slash root slash dot cache, uh, which is uh, used for 
uh, cache of uh, Go Golang objects. Uh, so this is very fast. Uh, so for example, uh, if uh, we build uh, build it into self uh, using uh, Docker uh, with a legacy build, uh, it took uh, 139 seconds. And uh, if you enable build kit, uh, it just takes uh, 31 seconds. And if you also uh, enable or run the hash mount, it just takes uh, 3.9 seconds. Uh, so this is uh, more than 30 more than 33 times faster than the uh, legacy Docker build. And uh, you can also uh, enable run dash mount type secret uh, with uh, experimental Docker file front end. Uh, so with a run dash, dash mount type secret, uh, you can access uh, private assets, uh, such as in private GitHub repos or uh, private S3 uh, budgets. Uh, without uh, reading the uh, credential file in the final image. Uh, so in this example, uh, you specify run mount type secret, it specify ID equal AWS, and specifies a uh, target of a mount point, such as root slash dot AWS credentials, and you can run AWS SRCP command for accessing uh, files on your private S3 buckets. And uh, you can uh, use this Docker file by uh, using build CTL, build that's a secret, ID AWS, uh, source equal uh, your uh, home directory dot AWS slash credentials. Uh, some of you may feel that uh, you can just use uh, copy instructions for injecting credential files to the uh, container and you can uh, delete credential after you, can, after you uh, run AWS S3 command. Uh, but please don't do this. Uh, because the uh, credential file uh, still uh, remains in the uh, layer archive even after you run uh, RM command for removing uh, credential file. And some of you may feel that uh, you can use uh, docker build dash dash build arc for uh, injecting uh, credential files as environmental variable, but this is not secure as well uh, because uh, the build arc values is, is uh, shown in a docker history command. Uh, so anyone who has read access to uh, your image can uh, read your credential as well. So this is not secure. Uh, so these were the couple of examples of uh, new features in BuildKit. So let's see what, uh, how you can actually use it. Uh, and. The main takeaway from this is that there are many, many ways, different ways how you can uh, the start to use BuildKit. The most simplest one is that you can just uh, use it uh, through Docker. So it's integrated into Docker build. You, you, you can use Docker build and it will just switch to BuildKit backend. Uh, we have a new product now in Docker called BuildX that I will show a little bit later. Uh, it's also using BuildKit. Uh, there are other tools, for example, IMG is, uh, is a very, basically a version of BuildKit for the cases where you don't want to have a daemon. There are different projects that integrate with, uh, with BuildKit, Tekton, Rio, Pouch. Uh, basically, there's, uh, there's uh, like, uh, you can use it in any combination inside container in, in Kubernetes with a container D daemon without it uh, in rootless and so on. So. But yeah, the simplest one is Docker build. Uh, uh, so it's integrated into the Docker build since 1809. So it's in the current stable version. Uh, we don't have Windows support yet, and so that's why it's uh, opt-in. So you need to enable, you need to basically define this environment variable, uh, Docker underscore build kit equals one. And if you do that, then basically when you once you run Docker build again. You, your output will switch to this new build kit output. You will see stuff running in parallel, see how much time it takes. You know that you're now using build kit. Uh, all the flags are the same and, and like should work, uh, sh like the migration should be like very smooth. So now about Docker BuildX. So talk, what Docker BuildX is, is uh, it's a CLA plugin on a new version of Docker it's basically like a next uh, generation build command from Docker. Uh, it's uh, very similar to, uh, to Docker build. It has the same, same build UI, same flags. So it's 
like very very easy to start using it, but it's using a full built uh, daemon as a backend, so not only like the integrated part in the Docker engine, and it also has a bunch of new features. Not only like the single build command, it can it can break you like uh, namespace instances of of builders. It can uh, you can basically create like a build uh, cluster and target uh, target uh, like a like a uh, set of nodes with it, uh, and and manage like how you how you would want a specific build to to be run, and uh, buildx supports uh, uh, like a driver concept. This is how like buildx accesses the build kit uh, internally, and uh, for example with a container D or sorry with a container driver. Uh, the build, the build kit itself runs inside a Docker container. So what's cool about that is then you can use uh, buildx with basically any version of Docker engine. So for example, we do some, we add some new build features. You don't necessarily need to upgrade to a new version of Docker engine to start to using to use it. You can you can use it with any older Docker engine, and it just runs inside a container completely, completely standalone. And because BuildX uses uh, full build kit, we can do some uh, extra features that we can't do with the Docker integration yet. So these are a couple of examples in here. Uh, for example, we can do remote caching. So this is very important, for example, for your CI when your build starts on a fresh machine, it doesn't have the local cache anymore. Uh, so now you can connect it to an external cache source and you can still uh, get much faster builds th this way. And, uh, and uh, basically save some trees. Uh, then uh, we also have uh, very good support for uh, multi-platform images in BuildX. So for this one, you can just use this uh, dash dash platform flag, and you can set uh, the, all the platforms where, for what you want to build with, build for. And uh, we will basically build for all of those platforms and combine them together into a multi-platform image so your, for example, in this case, your image will now run in both the AMD64 and r 64 machines, and we will automatically connect with, with like uh, if you have uh, like QMU emulation support in your machine, we, we will take advantage of this. It can also just uh, use multiple native nodes, for example, like AWS. You can you can have like an AMD64 and ARM node, and you can connect them both into build uh, buildx. You run a single build and. And it will actually build on on uh, on on both of those nodes in parallel. And we also have actually a very good cross compilation support through the multi-stage build in Docker file. So let me quickly show this buildx uh, as a demo in here. Let's see if this is right. So as I said, we have a Docker buildx command in here, and uh, you can see that there are a bunch of subcommands in here. So the most important is is probably the build. So build is, is basically very similar to the Docker build. Uh, you can you can just switch to it, and, and uh, you will be all familiar with it. Uh, but there's a bunch of other commands in here. For example, there's a, a command for creating new builders or listing them. So let, let's, for example, let's create a new one. And uh, sorry, not great, but build x great. And uh, let's inspect what we just created inspect and let's put this one as well. Mm, not going good. So now we're uh, uh, we're putting this builder. You don't actually need to do this. It's done as part of your your build flow as well. And you can see that this is our new like, namespace builder. Uh, this is all the platforms that uh, that this machine supports and it's running inside Docker container. So if I do Docker PS in here. Uh, then you can see that uh, that there's a new container in here, and this is the container where actually the builder is running. So it's not using the, the daemon directly; it's just running inside this uh, uh, inside this container. And I have a simple project in here, uh, just like a simple Docker file. And and uh, let's try to build this one, and let's try to like to build this one into a multi-platform image. So let's do Docker build X build. Uh, uh, let's specify some platforms. So let's do uh, AMD64, ARM64, and ARM. 
uh, let's give this a name and let's push it right away as well to the registry because this is how you mostly want to handle multi-platform images and let's build this one to we'll see that it's quite fast and it's done uh, what you will see in here is that uh, we actually executed all of those docker file commands uh, three times so you can see that this this command in here for example run for arm uh, and then and then for em64 and then for arm64 and we created manifest for all of those platforms and in the end we we joined them all together into a into a manifest list uh, that uh, makes up the multi-platform image. Uh, so let's inspect what we just built. Uh, image tools inspect is a command that you can use to inspect stuff in the registry. And we'll see that this is this image that we just built. It's a multi-platform image. Uh, uh, these are the, all the three sub-manifests that would be used when, when you run it. So if I just run this image in here, you will see that uh, it will greet me and say that uh, this machine is x86. But if I do the another one in here, uh, like for example this ARM64 one that would run on a native ARM machine uh, automatically uh, and run this one with Docker, We'll see that uh, this this sub image is now uh, ARM64. So this was like a super easy way to how you can how you can uh, do a single build and build a multi-platform image, and how you can, for example, in case of ARMs, you can start take advantage of all those uh, this uh, are op optimized hard hardware that's coming out now. And uh, it's not only for like this well-known platforms like. Uh, like uh, x86 and ARM, we've also used the same thing to, to do some some other crazier experiments. So uh, you can use the same tools also to build like WebAssembly containers, and you can actually run them in either in with Container D with a special shim, or or uh, there's also a, a tool I created that uh, that allows you to run those those uh, WASM containers uh, basically in, in any any machine without any requirement for for Docker Daemon, for example. And uh, there's also uh, RISC-V that's picking up popularity. So you can use the same tools already to, to build some, uh, for some uh, early RISC-V containers. So if you're interested in any of those topics, you can follow, up, uh, follow it up from those links. Uh, so this was how you could use uh, BuildKit with Docker. Akira will uh, talk to you how to use it as far as Kubernetes. Uh, so, uh, why do we want to uh, build images or uh, children this? I think there are uh, two different uh, motivations. Uh, the first one is for uh, CI CD. Uh, so, we have a bunch of uh, builder kit ports in the cluster, and we can uh, load balance uh, using uh, this cluster. And we have uh, some port for connecting to builder kit port. Uh, some ports can be, can be uh, just Jenkins or Tecton uh, or any uh, CI CD platform. That can be probably uh, invoked via some webhook. And uh, second motivation is for uh, developer experience. Uh, so you uh, write uh, code on some laptop uh, with poor CPU and RAM and uh, freaky Wi-Fi and uh, poor battery. Uh, so this laptop is enough for writing codes, but this is not uh, good for uh, building complex images. Uh, so you can uh, just uh, migrate your build onto cluster, and you can load balance using these ports uh, with a uh, rich CPU, memory, and stable and fast network, and uh, uh, stable power supply. Uh, previously, the common pattern to uh, build images on Kubernetes was to run a uh, Docker port uh, with uh, bind mounting uh, slash bar slash run slash docker.soc. But this is not secure. So if uh, the port uh, gets compromised, the host can get compromised as well, uh, because bus uh, run slash docker dot soc provides uh, full, privi full privileges to the host. Or another pattern wants to run uh, docker dint uh, docker dint into docker in docker port uh, with security conditions not privileged, but this is not secure as well apparently. 
Uh, so for build kit, uh, we support uh, rootless mode. Uh, that means uh, running a build kit demo as a non root user, uh, so as to protect the host from uh, potential build kit vulnerabilities. Uh, so even if uh, the build kit port did compromise, the host uh, cannot be compromised. And uh, this is uh, implemented using uh, user name spaces. Uh, so for uh, run Docker file instructions, uh, you can gain some fake, pri fake privileges uh, using user namespace. Uh, so you can still run uh, privileged commands such as uh, apt-git or yam or dnf or whatever. And to run a build kit in Kubernetes, uh, you don't need to have any extra sec security context like uh, security context dot privileged. Uh, but currently you need to disable secComp and Abrama because uh, we need to nest uh, containers on the top of the build kit container. There's also a very similar tool uh, called Kaniko, but it's different. Uh, so Kaniko uh, still runs as a root user, uh, but it's kind of uh, unprivileged. Uh, so you don't need to disable SecComp and Abrama. Uh, so Kaniko might be able to mitigate uh, some vulnerabilities that Build kit cannot mitigate, and vice versa. Uh, so uh, rootless build kit uh, might be still weak against some of uh, kernel vulnerabilities uh, that uh, Kaniko could uh, mitigate, and uh, Kaniko might be still weak against some uh, runcy uh, quota breakout vulnerabilities uh, that rootless, rootless build kit can mitigate. The next topic is deployment strategy. Uh, so we we can deploy our build kit as uh, just a deployment, or a demo set, or a set for set, or even just as a job uh, without uh, separate demo ports. The most typical deployment is to use uh, deployment, but you can also consider using demo set, uh, so it has uh, optimal load balancing, uh, but it's not, o not optimal for caching when you have a lot of nodes. And you can also consider using state for set. Uh, it's good for uh, consistent hosting uh, that we will discuss later, but it has uh, drawbacks on uh, scheduling. And you can also consider using a uh, job. Uh, in job, uh, you need to uh, put a client and ephemeral daemon in a, a single container. Uh, so it has some drawbacks or uh, cache stuff, but you don't need to manage the life cycles of the demos, uh, so probably a job is the uh, most easiest, easiest uh, deployment. And uh, for casting, uh, each of the build kit the demo pods has own cache, and uh, the build kit the pods can uh, share the cache uh, using a registry. And for load balancing, uh, we can just use uh, some headless service uh, with DNS round robin. Uh, so if you build an uh, image, uh, the request is handled by a uh, summer build kit demo, and it can uh, import the cache from the registry and uh, export updated cache to the registry. Uh, but uh, the remote cache on the registry is uh, slow uh, compared to the uh, demo local cache. Uh, so for example, uh, it takes uh, two minutes and 50 seconds uh, without cache. Uh, when you have a cache in the registry, uh, it takes uh, 36 seconds, so it's uh, very fast, uh, but it's still uh, slow compared to demo local cache. Uh, so with demo local cache, it just takes uh, 0.5 seconds. So it's uh, more than seven, 70 times faster than uh, remote cache on the registry. Uh, so if you want to uh, make use of uh, demo local cache, uh, you should uh, consider using uh, consistent hashing, uh, so you can stick a build request to a specific port in state port set, uh, so you can always uh, hit the demo on local cache. Uh, so for example, uh, we have uh, three build kit ports, uh, build kit to zero, one, and two, and we have three docker files, uh, full slash docker file, bar slash docker file, and bar slash docker file. And we apply the uh, same hashing functions to uh, these uh, build kit pods and uh, Docker file names uh, in uh, this uh, circular hashing space. 
uh, so we can assign a full flush local file and a bar flush local file to build to D2. And we can assign a bad flush local file to build to D1. Uh, so even if uh, you modify the content of Docker file or you uh, add or remove the, remove the uh, nodes in the cluster, uh, you can almost always uh, hit uh, cache uh, in the uh, build to the demo port. But this is not uh, optimal uh, for load balancing. Yeah, so uh, just a uh, recap. Uh, so BuildKit is a modern builder toolkit built on top of uh, next generation of container tools. Uh, it has uh, significant advantages over any previous tools. Basically, it will beat uh, any other builder in any benchmark as far as I know. Uh, you can start to use it today. You can use it with Docker. You can use it with Kubernetes. Any, any, basically any tool you you use, it's probably like has some integration with Pulkit, uh, uh, and uh, it's an open platform for uh, for uh, collaboration around build and to have like a new innovative solutions for for building containers. Uh, so if you're uh, so make sure you opt in to opt in to the build kit in, uh, in Docker and start using it. Uh, if you're interested in the projects, there are like lots of uh, the interesting things in the work uh, in the work. So uh, if you're interested in that side, make sure to join us in the repository in, in GitHub. And uh, thank you very much. I think we have a little bit of time for questions, right? Yeah. Any questions on this there? Um, sorry if I missed it, but uh, can BuildKit do deterministic builds? Sorry? Can BuildKit do deterministic builds? Um, it depends on how you define deterministic. So in, in most cases, yes, if you're like, uh, uh, like in, in almost all cases, it's good enough. But uh, but yeah, like uh, if you're like uh, going after after like uh, preserving time steps and things like that, then uh, then you will at the moment you will do, need to do some stuff manually inside inside Dockerfile, for example, for that. Okay, but you so you can like strip existing, you can strip all timestamps. Uh, yeah, like, like for example, like uh, we do uh, we do do stuff better than the old builder, for example, like old builder, for example, like timestamps all your images and stuff like that. We, we try to avoid that, like, if you're using cache, then we don't timestamp it again, and we, we do some, some stuff like that. Awesome, thank you. Hello, um, uh, my question is, uh, you just uh, uh, show us uh, Docker Build X, right? So uh, I want to know the, whether the Build X is formally supported by the Mobi project or just maintained by yourself. So uh, Build X is part of the Docker organization. So it's uh, so it's uh, it's still open source. You, it's uh, GitHub slash Docker slash Build X. Uh, it ships with uh, with uh, the like the current beta version of Docker. So so you can you can get it as part of like the community edition and. And you can contribute to it and, and things like that. But it's like, yeah, it's it's a little bit more opinionated than than BuildKit itself. That's why it's like in Docker organization, not in the Mobi organization at the moment. Okay. So uh, another question is, um, I I want to know, uh, is there any uh, new features or uh, big changes in the pipeline for the uh, next uh, re release or, or or the future work? A any such plan? Uh, What's the question about uh, My question is, um, um, is there any other features? Or, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, in the pipeline that may be uh, implemented in the future. Yeah, you can look at the, the GitHub repository. We have, like, we have, we have ton, of, ton of issues with like, a feature, feature request or enhancement table there. Uh, I think the big ones are that we want to do like fully distributed builds. And we, uh, we want to just. Uh, like basically make the developer flow much for much more smoother. So we, if we can like uh, add some of the more debugging capabilities and things like that as well, like that would be really cool in the next features. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, we also have uh, some plan for uh, nested Docker file, uh, so you can uh, reference uh, another Docker file uh, from your Docker file. Okay, thank you very much.